Welcome, everybody. The Lord bless you. Uh, we are studying at this moment one of the most uh, remarkable moments of history. It is very remarkable in that we're living so close to it personally uh, that we, are, we, can, we, can, we can see it uh, emerging and, and coming. And so uh, uh, we need to know how to, uh, to, to have our own selves ready uh, and our families ready for this most dramatic moment uh, in the history of mankind. Uh, in your teaching syllabi, it has to do with the Great Tribulation. And if you have your syllabi there, uh, right, uh, right above it, uh, <clears throat> the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter uh, 16, and we'll begin in verse 1. It says the Pharisees, uh, they were the uh, super religious group of Jesus' day. Uh, they were the ones that uh, would keep the law uh, to its ex 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 extremity and, uh, and, and, and did it mechanically and not, not with the Spirit. The, the, the Pharisees, it says, with, with the Sadducees, uh, the Sadducees were uh, a group of people uh, who were of the Jewish faith, but they just could not believe and miracles. And so they set themselves aside as the liberals and said, we do not believe uh, in Moses walking uh, through the Red Sea. Uh, we do not believe that fire came down from heaven on the altar uh, where when they dedicated the temple under Solomon. And anything that was related to the supernatural, uh, these people called the Sadducees. Now that is the reason that they, they were sad, you see. Because anybody that don't believe in miracles is very sad, you see. And so we, we had these two groups, the fundamentalists, and then we had the liberals. And it's such that they came together. Now, very few times did they ever get together except to throw stones at each other. <coughs> and now they had found a place of unity, and that was to fight Jesus. It's, it's very re 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 remarkable that what we call strange bedfellows get together, you know. Uh, uh, between them, they don't believe anything equal, but if there's a third party there, they can both fight him together. And so that's the situation that you had here. It says, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to, to the Lord Jesus, and they, they, tempting him, they tempted him. Uh, they did not come for the right reasons. They did not come for any spiritual uh, achievements. It says they were tempting him. They were trying to find fault with his doctrines. They were trying to show him as not being a sincere person uh, or, nor a righteous person. It says, and, and tempting him, they desired him uh, that he would show them a sign from, from, from heaven. Now, I do not know exactly what kind of sign uh, these men wanted, whether they wanted a physical sign to see a fireball in the heavens or, or, or healing or something. But they came uh, wanting to observe the supernatural because even though a group, one group were a fundamentalist and the other group were liberals, uh, they wanted to see something of a supernatural nature. Now, if you think the world has changed the last 2,000 years, you're wrong. Uh, this could be the story of our country today, to where we have groups called fundamentalists and groups called liberals, and they can get together to fight you real easy. Uh, uh, but uh, they, when they're just dealing between themselves, they're, they're completely at odds with each other. Uh, but when it comes to adding you in as another problem, they can both hit you at the same time. And he says that they came and they wanted to see a miracle from the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 2, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, oh, When it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Now, uh, I'm glad to see that in the Bible, because when I was a boy, that's the way we uh, talked about the weather. And I thought it was new, until <laughs> I found out they were doing the same thing 2,000 years ago. 
uh, they, they looked and said, hey, look at that, we're going to have a pretty day tomorrow, see that sky? And, and that's what farmers did all when I was a kid growing up. Uh, they, were, they were very remarkable watchers of the sky uh, to know what would be happening in the next 24 hours, where they could plant or not, or where they could uh, harvest or not, and, and so forth. Now, now he said, I want to remind you gentlemen of something. Uh, evidently, they, they did understand uh, this weather business, you know. And so Jesus was talking to them about something they already understood about. Now he said, now you say this. So he was laying the, the, the situation straight into their lap by saying, now this is what you say. Uh, that in the evening time when the sky is all glorious and wonderfully lighted up, you say, hey, look at there, look at there. Going to have a pretty day tomorrow. Uh, we've got the birth of it coming right now. And, and so he said, now that's, that, that's what you say. It will be fair weather, the sky is red. But in the morning, you will say it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. And so he said, now when you wake up in the morning and you see those awful streaks of the sky, uh, black with red all through them, uh, it says, uh, hey, you see, there's a storm coming. I can see a storm brewing out there. I can see these signs that there's going to be a bad, a bad day today, uh, weather-wise. Now, he said, seeing that you, that you know that, uh, for the sky is red and lowering, then he says, you, 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 you hypocrites. Uh, it's a remarkable that Jesus uh, wasn't one for making friends. Uh, you don't call a man a hypocrite to his face, you know, and, and cause him to hug you <laughs> and give you a nice little kiss on the cheek or something other. Uh, he said, now, you're, you're hypocrites. You say, what did he mean by that? He meant that they came there for the wrong reason and the wrong purpose, and that they did not come seeking spiritual enlightenment, uh, that, they, that, they, that they did not come there wanting to draw closer to God, that they were seeking a godly source for an evil purpose. Uh, and there are people like that today. They like to trap everyone that loves God any way that they could. They like to trap him so that he could be ineffective uh, to the people. And so the Lord says, now, now listen, you're hypocrites. You didn't come here uh, for the right pur purpose. Now he says, now you can discern the face of the sky. Uh, he said, now you're not bad at that. I, I, I presume they were middle-aged and more. Uh, these, these gentlemen that came to him, dressed up in their very, very religious looking clothes that they wore in those days. Uh, their religion was on their back and not inside of them. And so uh, he said, now, now you're, you're hypocrites. And I, I, I just like, like to say, you can discern the face of the sky. Now, what he meant here was, you understand natural things. You, yes, you understand nature. Uh, it's, it's, it's to be commended that you do understand nature. You know, whether to travel or not, because you look into the sky. Uh, he, he said, you do understand nature, but, put a circle around the word but, but, can you not discern, can you not discern the signs of the times? Can you not discern, can you not understand the signs of the times? Uh, when you know of all the things that I have done, can you not see what they mean to you? You know, now we live in such a moment right now. I, um, maybe it's worse than that one, I don't know. Uh, uh, un, un, until... So many things are happening today, but people cannot see the meaning of them spiritually. We live just like they did in Noah's day, just like Jesus said, you know, that as it was in the days of Noah, it shall be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and divorcing, and they were doing all the things that they wanted to until the flood came. And it says, and they did not know that had a hundred years of preaching, that had a hundred years of a man screaming at him. The Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness that had a hundred years of that and hadn't learned anything yet. Isn't that amazing? They could watch him build a boat and possibly criticize him for a crack. Said, oh, Noah said, I don't know where the rain's going to, I don't know where the water's going to come from. And see that crack, you better get that worked on there. And no doubt they were around examining it every day but they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away that this was a spiritual thing 
that it wasn't a piece of wood that, that was going to float in the water one day, but this was a spiritual thing. Now, we see so many things in our society right now that, that indicate the dissolution of society. I mean, the destruction of society. But can you get people to see that there's a spiritual significance to the conditions of the world at this moment? Then you and I will have to say, <laughs> clean up ourselves first. Live what we teach. Uh, live the way we believe, and not the opposite of it. And let us show ourselves, men and women of God, and let us live by the word that whatever they say or think, one day they'll say, they did not know until they came and took them all away. They didn't know it. But says, we want you to know this, that in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going you're, you're gonna to have something there of a... Uh, he's he's going to say one day, uh, I gave you these signs that you might know. Now, uh, we have come in uh, page uh, 39 in your teaching syllabi. It's called the... The time of the great tribulation. Got your pencil there? Uh, to up at the top of the page, put the time of the great tribulation. Uh, we're dealing specifically with time. Now, time is an element that belongs to this earth world. Time is not an element in heaven. Heaven is timeless. Now, I, I, it is not possible for you and for me to understand timelessness for the simple reason we're creatures of time. Every day we see time. One day older, and, and uh, time has passed, the month is gone. We, we live by what we call time. But in the world to come, there is no time. Yesterday, tomorrow, and today are equal in time because we are immortal creatures. We are everlasting beings, and that we're living like God lived. Ooh, I'm ready for that. How about you? Every time I look in the mirror, I wish we'd start real soon. Now, we are dealing with a period of time that has to do with approximately seven years. Uh, a, a seven years of putting the thing, to, uh, three and a half years of putting it together, and, and then three and a half years of its function and operation called the Great Tribulation. Now, it, possibly it will begin with the rapture of the church. Now, if you are going to listen to men, uh, you're going to get really confused about this last period of time. Uh, now, th there's a reason for that. The devil wants the whole of the world to be confused at the most dramatic moment the world has ever known. I think it was the same in every great period of time. In, 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 in Moses' day, he had a confused bunch of people. Yeah, they did march out in the desert. Got out there and didn't know why they were there. Are you here? They were the same in Jesus' day. Here he was, fulfilling prophecy. And they couldn't get it through there. They couldn't get it through. So it cannot be any better 2,000 years later when we come at the most dramatic moment when the war that began in heaven with the Lucifer and has continued down to the last moment before the kingdom shall be turned over to Jesus to rule and reign. But it's got to be a moment of confusion. Just don't be part of the confusion. Always take care of that which you can take care of and that which you cannot leave it alone. And don't let some person say, uh, I, I believe this is that. Well, his beliefs of that are very limited to what he's read, what his little mind has thought of. And it might be just a million miles from the absolute truth of God. So if you're going to permit your life, uh, I, Brother John here, uh, who forgave me a piece of paper this past week, where a young man that I've known him for a number of years, and he's just written a book. And he makes the Muslim religion fill the whole book of Revelation. Uh, I, I guess he's really got it in for the Muslims. I don't know. Uh, but but he, 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 everything that's done there, he fits them into it. Now, he don't have any scripture for that. He reads the Bible, and then he says it means this. 
Well, it may not mean that at all, you see. And when, when, I, when John showed it to me and I handed it back, I said, I don't believe any of that. None of it. I said, I don't think the Muslims have very much to do with the return of the Lord. But I says, I'll tell you what I do believe. I believe a backslidden church, living in adultery, living in deep sin, living in lies, L-I-E-S. I, I, I believe they have a lot to do with it. And then a political system. The Roman Empire, if you look at the great statue in the second chapter of Romans, it continued down through the ten toes. That was not a Muslim empire. They were not even born to 750 years after Christ. Are you here? Amen. There was no Roman Empire when that thing was born. If it had been, they would possibly the Roman Empire would have wiped it out. But the Ottoman Empire was coming into great strength. And through the sword, they converted the Ottoman Empire, called the Turkish Empire. And then with the sword, they went to Jerusalem and destroyed the, the Christian kingdom that had been there a hundred years. Then they spread across North Africa and, and a little bit of Southern Europe. And, and so they will be treated like all nations, like America will be treated. They will be treated like England will be treated, you see. They have had an opportunity for the truth. What did they do with the truth? But there are those who are part of this thing. What is the Great Tribulation for? It's for two things, and not three. It is for two things. It is to judge the ungodly nations that have deliberately gone away from God. Are you here? Yeah. Russia is just receiving her rewards of iniquity. They don't know what tomorrow morning is going to bring. They have nothing settled. They don't know who's going to rule Russia tomorrow or next week. And for all the innocent people they've killed, slaughtered, the preachers they've slaughtered, the underground church that had to run from tree to tree and hide themselves, that world changed and those high men stay hidden away. You may see pictures of them, but they take those in their offices with a hundred guards around them to preserve their lives. Now, China will go the same way. The Lord told me so, you see. We, we, we're going to see these nations receive their right judgment, their correct judgment. I understand that Mao Zedong slaughtered 30 million uh, Chinese in order to establish communism. That blood is hanging over China right now. That's, that's innocent blood. That's martyr's blood. Now, the great tribulation is for two things. Number one, it will judge the nations. And number two, it will judge Israel. It's a very sad thing to know. I was in Israel during one of their wars. And I just happened to meet one of their generals in a concourse. And I shook his hand and I said, that was, thank God it was a short war and thank God that Israel won. And, and uh, I said, God sure performed miracles. He said, who, who, who did you say? I said, God helped you. Said, I didn't see any of that. He says, all I saw was our valiant men destroyed the enemy. Well, there was a man who knew military tactics and military war, but knew nothing about Jehovah. And they're going to come to know about Jehovah. Amen. They're going to get in the corner where there's nowhere to hide. They're going to get depressed until they can't breathe any further. Then they're going to say, hey, I think I need Jehovah. My, 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 my military might don't save me now. But anybody with any thinking at all to think that 100 million people hate her in a little place about that big with 4 million Jews in it. 4 million to 100 million. And they still have survived for 50 years. Now, anybody that don't see something different about that, there's something wrong with you thinking about it, you know. Because by all reasons, they shouldn't be there at all. 
by all reasons, but they're there. But if you were to talk to each one of them personally today, most of them would say, I don't know what to believe. I think you could call me an agnostic or even maybe an infidel. I don't know anything about God. Well, they're going to come to know the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. They're going to come to know him. And that is the thing we're studying about, the great tribulation. The great tribulation has no relationship to the church. Get that out of your little brain. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to folks on television. Aren't you glad we got two audiences so you can always hide behind the TV? <laughs> that's, for them. that's for those folks. And so, being the most exciting moment in all the history of mankind, we should give a lot of attention to it. And all the people said, uh, there, will be, there will come a persecution of the church. Now, uh, we, we're working off of page 40. There will, there will come, and, and, I, and I hate to say it that way because I, it really isn't right. The church has always been persecuted. It began with martyrdom of one of its deacons when the church was only a few days old. And there was great persecution in Jerusalem. S Saul became Paul on his way to persecute Christians. He was a persecutor of God's children. They'd done nothing wrong, they'd hurt nobody, and something inside of him said, kill him, kill him. And that spirit is still in the world at this moment. And so it, it says, there come a time of persecution of the church. There's not, this is not part of the great tribulation because we have always been persecuted. The poor church in China, even since I was there a few weeks ago, one of the precious young men preachers, 22 years old, was beaten to death on Main Street by the communists, screaming at him as if, as if they were animals, screaming at him. And, saying, we're going to kill all of you. No, they're not going to kill them all. There are 45 million of them that speak in tongues, and so they're not going to kill them all. But there's going to be a dramatic change, and God's going to make the change. And when God makes the change, there's no hand that can hold him back. Uh, he will fulfill that which he has ordained to fulfill. This is not part of the great, put a little circle around the word great, uh, a great tribulation. It's tribulation, but it is not the great, the great tribulation. They're beginning again in the, in the portions of the country in Europe that was part of the old USSR to persecute Christians again. And it started in the last six months. In order for Brother Uff Ekman to bring his tent into Kiev, they wanted a hundred the government wanted $100,000. They knew they could keep him out on the basis of $100,000, you see. Then he wanted to run an auditorium. I was the main speaker, supposed to be. And uh, in order to, to keep him out, they said every hall was already booked. If you went looking in every hall every night, you might have found they weren't booked at all. So the window was open and a little light came in. And there may have been millions of them that got saved. And they're still moving and getting people saved. But that evil thing called persecution is rising again. And it's, it's in Bulgaria and it's in Romania. And, it's, it's, and they're trying to get it going in Albania even. But uh, God save us. Can you say amen? This is not part of the... This, this is part of the tribulation period that has been going on for the last 2,000 years. Uh, the, the hatred of the body of Christ because we have Jesus inside of us. It began in the times of the apostles. It continued until this moment. Those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. So stop your grumbling about it when they don't like you where you work. If you're a godly person, they're supposed to. And it's not you, it's the Jesus in you. If you were a drunkard and a whoremonger, they'd just love you to death. And thank you for each bottle of beer you bought them. They shall suffer for his name's sake. There's no doubt about it. 
the great tribulation has to do with the judgment of God poured upon this earth. It does not have to do with the time of tribulation which the church has been in for the last 2,000 years. Here are some of the, of the things which are going to take place uh, during that time. And then we start reading to you the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we will begin there in our next lesson. Uh, by, by, reading, by reading Matthew 24, 1, 1 through 9. The Lord Jesus pinpointed conditions that would be taking place during what we call Great Tribulation. Now, Great Tribulation is when God does the tribulating. Tribulation is when man hurts man through evil influence in sight of him. But the great tribulation has to do when God steps in and God is the one that brings the tribulation. And so please keep the difference in your heart and in your mind. And in doing so, you, you, you and I will have this thing the way God wants us to understand it. You must know this. There are things that you will never fully understand because if you fully understood them, you would not have to live by faith. Oh, I already know that. Well, if you don't know it, you better live by faith. And all the people said, Amen. praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand, everybody.